Bank Sporting Goods Kickoff Week. Welcome back, Darlington, Texas, the Cowboy Classic presented by Hampton Hotels. The home team, TCU, ranked sixth in the country, leading number 24, Oregon State, by a score of 21 to 14. Welcome back to Arlington and Cowboy Stadium, everybody. Brad Nestler along with Todd Blackledge. Holly Rowe will join us in just a second. Partner, I think there's a couple things as we go into the third quarter. I don't know if it's imperative that uh, Oregon State gets a stop on TCU yeah. to start this third quarter, but they got to get Jaquiz Rogers somehow yeah. involved offensively. Yeah, I think what Mike Riley said to Holly coming off the field is exactly right. TCU's ability to run and Oregon State's inability to run in that first half was the difference in the ball game. They've got to get Jaquiz more involved. This is a guy that gained over a thousand yards back-to-back -back season. Right. He only had 24 yards in that first half, and 15 of it came on one run. So TCU did a great job of bottling him up in the first half. So we'll see how that develops. TCU is going to have the football first. Remember they got the almost a gift touchdown in the final minute of the second quarter to take the lead for the first time. They have it as we start the third quarter 21 14. And the kick will go to Jeremy Curley right at the goal line. Curley heads to the middle of the field hurdles a man. We got a flag down way back here at about the 35 yard line. This year, wedge blocking is illegal on kick returns. I don't know that that might have been the call. We didn't get a preliminary signal again. Here is the call. During the return, holding number 35 of the return team, 10 yard penalty, first down. That's what happens when you don't wedge block, you hold people. Let's check <laughs> in with Holly. Well, coaches are never happy, but Gary Patterson was as happy as he could be with how his defense played against the run in the first half. What he didn't like was how they played against the big play. He said, I knew exactly what pass was coming because of the formation. I told the defense, and they still gave up that big pass play. So, guys, he wants them to tighten it up there, but he said, we've got to quit turning the ball over. He wants a senior quarterback to show some leadership in that regard. Here's a senior quarterback in the shotgun inside the 10-yard line. As the line of scrimmage is a 14 for the Horn Frogs. And the quick throw out in the flat to Sky Dawson, trying to use that speed. We saw him use it in the first half on one of his pass receptions. Lance Mitchell puts him down, though, as he got out to the 20 yard line. Well, interestingly, right now, Stephen Paya is not in the ballgame for Oregon State. Their best defensive lineman is standing on the sideline to start the third quarter. And that can't be good for Oregon State. Here's a pistol set again with Ed Wesley, who was very, very efficient in the first half in the tailback spot behind Andy Dalton. Dalton may have changed things up there on a second and five. He tells Wesley to call. Rides it in his gut, and Wesley broke out of the pack. Out across the 25 to the 27, and Wesley's got a first down, pickup of nine. It's a big offensive line for TCU. They got some guys playing in some different spots. Marcus Cannon, the starting left tackle, number 61, is 6'6". Six, six. They list him at 350. I think he's bigger than that. He was a biscuits a, yeah. bigger than that, yeah. He was a right tackle last year. He's the starting left tackle. Zach Roth is the starting right tackle. He was a guard last year, but they're big, big bodies up there, and they're having their way right now running the football. Dalton slips green to Curley, and that got it out to about the 30-yard line. Pickup of about three. Marcus Cannon, right now, they say he's around 263. That's kind of the rumor around the locker room. As Todd said, he was the right tackle last year, and Jared Anderson, the offensive coordinator, calls him the dancing bear. That big, but still agile, and uh, he is a load on the left side. It's interesting. He said it takes him a couple weeks during training camp to get back interested in football. He just uh, especially when it's 105 yeah, degrees yeah. in practice. <laughs> Pye is back in there now the defensive front for the Beavers out of the shotgun. And Wesley got the corner turned up and short of the first down by about one I think. Ed Wesley quietly putting a nice night together. Ten carries for 77 yards and a touchdown. 
Starting cornerback Brandon Harden just walked off the field after that last play. Number 17 for Oregon State. Out of the game. TCU, Todd, did a great job in the first half on their third down conversions. The only two times they didn't pick them up, they were third and six or longer. This is a short one. Yeah, they averaged third and 5.5 to go, and there's another conversion. Matthew Tucker dances his way into the second level, and the first down went on a quick snap there. Yeah, they huddled, so it wasn't a no huddle, but it was quick to the line and quick snap, and they still caught the Oregon State defense not ready to play. Seven out of nine on third down. You win a lot of football games playing like that. And you mentioned that the key to being successful on third down is manageable distance. I mean, they haven't had to throw the football and make tough throws on third down. They've been able to run it. First down at the 42. Opening drive, third quarter for the Horn Frogs. Here's a counter. Tucker. And Tucker now getting in there and spelling Ed Wesley, and he's getting his yards as we check in with Holly. Well, guys, all through the preseason and since last season, Jaquiz Rogers was never tackled through practice. In fact, some of their staffs told me he wasn't tackled one time. So in the first half, several times I saw his body language. He was starting to get tired, and now look at him over here on the bench. He's just kind of chilling, relaxing. I don't know if he's tired, but the body language suggests it. Just wondering how hard is it to suddenly get tackled in a game when you aren't used to it throughout the course of the preseason. It doesn't look like he's into it at all, does he? Seventh play of the TCU drive, opening up the third quarter. As we said, you'd like to get the football back defensively. What a grab by Bart Johnson going down. Got his hands out there and snared that one at the 38-yard line. It was a great effort by Johnson. I thought this ball hit the ground. I mean, that's what it looked like to me, but Johnson made a great effort for it. Going down. Oh, no, what a great catch. About two wow. inches left. <laughs> that was a tremendous catch. Yeah, it really was. You talk about getting your hands out and catching the football in front of you instead of using your body. You can't do it any better than that. Drive stays alive and moves to the 38-yard line of Oregon State. Here's Tucker. Puts his head down and dives inside the 35. Lance Mitchell, another tackle. Mitchell's been a busy safety back there. He's made a lot of stops tonight. Well, you mentioned you don't know if it was absolutely necessary that Oregon State gets a stop in this drive. I think it is pretty critical because the TCU defense had dialed it up there in the second quarter a little bit and uh, tightened down. And if they put another score up here, it could be uh, it could be a long second half for Oregon State. They put Wesley a tailback out and a bunch to the right. They're going to throw it back to the left though, and it's Dawson. Uh, beg your pardon, Hicks. Antoine Hicks with a catch, and he's down to the 22-yard line. Pick up a 13 more. Andy Dalton mixing it up pretty well right now. Yeah. Well, they have weapons everywhere. They've got versatile backs. They've got talented wide receivers you have to account for, and a quarterback who can run. And this is a very versatile offensive football team to go with, again, a defense that's been ranked number one in the country the last two years in a row. When we asked them what they are missing offensively. They say, well, you miss Ryan Christian, who's a wide receiver type running back playing for the Toronto Argonauts of the CFL. But other than that, they got all their weapons back. And here's Dalton on a keeper. And Andy got to the 22 yard line. Paya made the stop, lost his lid in the process. Stephen Paya, after a workout in the spring, bench pressed 225 pounds 44 times, which would be one off the NFL combine record. That's how strong this guy is. He came in here yesterday when the three of us were at the walkthrough, and he just looked around and he went, wow. All he, could, all he could do is look at the video board here in this stadium. And he looked like a little kid, but he's anything but a little kid on that defensive front. Dalton throws out. Flags are down. Wesley trying to break tackles and does inside the 20. But again, penalty marker at the line of scrimmage. Illegal motion. Number 88, offense. Five-yard penalty. Repeat second down. Jimmy Young got a head start. Well, the only thing that appears to be stopping TCU right now is TCU because uh, Andy Dalton is doing a brilliant job of spreading the ball around, mixing in the run. He's 
four for four on this drive to four different receivers. That one didn't count because of the penalty. TCU has got 27 seniors on their roster, which ties for the number one amounts in all of college football. So they've got leadership from that quarterback position, and they've got a lot of other guys that are leaders as well. Here's the option and the pitch to Tucker, and Tucker is inside the 15, close to another first down. Roberson with a tackle. Boy, nice one-two punch between Wesley and Tucker. Yeah, they have really hurt him with the option when they've gotten outside. Dalton does a nice job of making decisions, taking it to the decision point, getting it outside, outflanking the defense, wide receivers blocking downfield. And they're, they're wearing out this Oregon State defense because they're making them run side to side. Not only are they not getting TCU's offense off the field, the quarter's half over. Dalton throws, and oh, it's there intercepted. It There's the one mistake. And Dwight Roberson with a second interception of Dalton tonight. That puts the halt and the stop yeah. to what TCU was doing. And that was a huge play for Oregon State because they weren't stopping him physically, but they got this interception that they needed. They're down a touchdown, but they're on offense when we come back. College football in high definition is presented by Vizio. 21-14, Oregon State stops any further damage with that interception. TCU, as we take a look at the red zone, brought to you by Verizon. An interception and three touchdowns in four possessions in the red zone tonight, but a costly one in the red zone by the redhead on that last throw. Dwight Roberson's first career interception gives it back to his offense. At the 13-yard line, Ryan Katz loads and fires, and he oh, throws it right back, <laughs> almost. Oh boy. oh, boy. Jason Teague had it right between the two and the seven and couldn't hold on. And Katz now is one of his last six, Todd. Yeah. Well, they were trying to get the ball to the tight end, Halahuni. He was double covered. I mean, there was not even a place for Katz to throw the football, and he was very, very lucky because he zeroed in on Halahuni to try to get him involved in the offense and uh, very fortunate that wasn't picked off. Jason Teague, one of the new starting corners, Raphael Priest and Nick Sanders were four-year starters for TCU in those positions. So new starting corners tonight. And he almost had the football right back for his offense. Second and 10 for the 13. Jaquiz spins and got it out. Tough run to the 21. One of his better runs of the night. Well, he made a couple guys miss. There were guys that were unblocked, and Jack Quiz was able to make a miss right about the line of scrimmage. Right here, he makes two safeties miss, and he's able to pick up five or six yards. I've said before to an Oregon State games, Quiz might be short, but he's not little. He is poured into that body, and he can take a shot and deliver one as well. Big third down right here. Maybe the biggest of the night so far for Oregon State. Cats quick throw got it first down James Rogers and he is going to be horse collar that's yep. going to be another 15 yards. Boy did you see James protecting the football. I mean he was not letting go of this football. He had it high and tight. Tanner Brock's the guy that is going to be guilty of the horse collar. When I was up there Wednesday after practice the Rogers brothers both were running sprints. Personal foul. Horse collar tackle. Number 35, defense. 15-yard penalty enforcing the end of the run. Automatic first down. They were running sprints together, carrying a football, and carrying it just like this. Watch him secure the ball after the catch. High and tight, not getting rid of the football, and getting extra yardage. We talked about the Rogers brothers having so much family and friends from their hometown of Richmond, Texas here tonight. They've got something to cheer about now because the Beavers are back in Horn Frog territory at the 42-yard line with a first down. Trailing by a touchdown. Cats going deep. Got a man out there and overshot him. Marcus Wheaton. And again, you see the arm of Ryan Katz. Maybe a little more air under that. That might be a touchdown, but he got it out there and got it all the way to the end zone. 
I'm surprised they still have not been able to throw the ball to Jacquez Rogers yet. You know, last year he caught 78 balls, and that was up from 29 his freshman year, and they've not thrown it to him yet tonight. will be blown dead. Yeah, that timeout was called from the sideline. Mike Riley had to call timeout there. Timeout, Oregon State. This is the first of the half. Timeout. With 6.33 remaining in the third quarter, head coach of the Beavers wants to talk it over with his troops. They've got a golden opportunity to try to tie this up when we come back. Back at the Cowboy Classic presented by Hampton Hotels, 21-14 TCU with six and a half to go in the third quarter. With Todd Blackledge and Holly Rowe, I'm Brad Nessler. Nice to have you along on this Saturday night from Arlington, Texas. Oregon State trails by a touchdown. They got it second and ten, though, in TCU territory. And deep middle, and what a strike thrown by Katz. Down to the 22-yard line to Halahuni, and he's still heading toward the end zone. Now the first time they were able to get him involved, remember they tried to throw to him on the first play of this possession and it should have been intercepted. This time they find an opening and he's a weapon in the middle of the field. A very good pass receiver. He's got good speed. Had 35 catches a year ago and does a nice job of hanging on to the football at the end of this catch. Got it down to the 17, 25-yard pickup. Now it's an eye backfield with Darkins, a fullback in there. One of the few times tonight we've seen this formation. Play action. Yes. Going to the corner where nobody's home. Let's check in with Reese Davis. All right, Brad. LSU and North Carolina and the Bayou Bengals have three touchdowns of more than 50 yards, including this one from Jordan Jefferson to Reuben Randall coming into his own, once a highly touted receiver coming out of high school. 30 to 10 at halftime on ABC. And look at the Sooners in trouble at home against Utah State. A seven-point game. Utah State's got the ball. Here, Oregon State driving in TCU territory. Jaquiz Rogers got away, got the corner. Rogers. What a great block by James Rogers. James Rogers said in that soundbite, he likes to try to give his brother a two-way go. That means you want to just size up your man and let him go in or out. Watch the block by James Rogers on the cornerback, Greg McCoy. Stands him straight up and allows Chuck Wiz to either go in or out, get to the corner, and get inside the five-yard line. So the Beavers bring in an extra tight end as they've got it. At the two-yard line, a 16-yard run. Actually, it's at the one-yard line. A 16-yard run by Rodgers to get him close. Quiz again. Tiptoes in. Touchdown. Mom's loving it. So are all the Oregon State faithful. We're a point away from a tie game again. You go back to the interception that Andy Dalton threw, the interception that almost was thrown by Ryan Katz that was dropped, and now we have a tie ball game almost. Justin Cahoot for the third tie of the Knights. It's up and good. Now Andy Dalton knows what his job is. Try to get the football back in Oregon State's end, but not make a mistake. Remember this? This was the first play of this scoring drive. Almost threw it right back to him. As it turned out, they got it inside the two, and Quiz took it in to tie the ball game up. The 2010 Cowboys Classic, brought to you by Dick's Sporting Goods. Every season starts at Dick's. And Dr. Pepper, there's nothing like a pepper. They tell us it's the best locker room on the premises, the locker room of the Dallas Cowboy cheerleaders. I know one thing, they got more makeup mirrors in that one than they do in the <laughs> Cowboys locker room. 21-21, 5-33, remaining third quarter. Jaquiz Rogers finally got free for a touchdown to cap an 87-yard drive and eight plays. So we're dead even for the third time tonight. He had a 
couple good runs on that drive. Yes, he did. Okay, who to kick? Jeremy Curley camps under at the six yard line. Curley had a little seam for a second, got out to about the 29 yard line. Anthony Watkins made the stop there. Well, don't forget Boise State, Virginia Tech coming up on Monday night. You talk about implications as far as the BCS, Boise State with that high national ranking after an undefeated season last year. But Frank Beamer and the Hokies are waiting for him at FedEx Field. Yeah, I like the Hokies in that game. I got a lot of respect for Kellen Moore. We did the game against TCU last year. Chris Peterson, great coach. I think the running game of Virginia Tech and their physicality will be the difference in that game Monday night. Andy Dalton has set up shop with the offense at the 29 yard line. Play action. He's going to go deep down the sideline and incomplete. Intended for Jimmy Young. Dalton tonight has thrown a couple interceptions. Todd, you talked about Fiesta Bowl. He had three in yeah. that game and lost, and there's a very vital statistic in his interception ratio. Vital and alarming if you're a TCU fan. When he throws no interceptions in his career, TCU is 22 and 0. When he throws two or more, they're 0 and 4. And he's thrown two tonight. That was good coverage that time by James Dockery. But uh, again, Andy Dalton. He said what he took away from that loss and his performance stay even keel play the whole the whole game don't lose focus and don't let your emotions get the best of you. Well, start, number 61 this offense. isn't going to help the cause either. It'll back it up. Second, down. second down and 15. There's a new center in there. Jake Kirkpatrick who's the senior and one of the offensive captains. He was shaken up on the last drive when TCU had the football. And so Josh Vernon has slid over there from his guard position. That's never a situation you want to get in either, whether it's shotgun snap or just direct snap to your quarterback. In this case, it's going to be the shotgun. And the center does more than snap the ball in this offense. He's got to set the protections as well. A lot of thinking as well. Well, there's a good throw to Curley. First down. Out of bounds. About the 42-yard line. Pickup of 18. Now everybody remembers Curley as a return guy. That's where he's made his biggest plays, but he was the leading receiver on this team last year with 44 catches. He's become a very good receiver throughout his career. Jared Anderson told us the offensive coordinator, he's got to remind him all the time, just think of everything as a home game. Says he tends to lose focus on the road, and he said, I'm going to tell him, make sure even though we're not at our own stadium. This is our home game. Well, he was focused on that catch, and there's a first down at the 43-yard line. Here's the option that's been successful tonight. Pitch to Wesley, and it's successful again. All the way inside of 45 to the 43. You know, playing defense and good defense is about leverage. It's about staying on top of the def of the offense. If they run outside, having more guys outside to force it in. And every time TCU has run this option, they've been able to leverage the Oregon State defense. They've been able to get outside and get more people out there to block than they have defenders. Here comes a quick snap again. And it's Wesley again. And another first down run. Or right at it. He got about 10 more, and he's over 100 for the night. And he's averaging about nine yards a pop. Comes up limping a little bit. He's had a heck of a game. Yeah. What I like here, too, is uh, the, the answer by TCU. Go right back down the field. Do it by running the football, which you do best. Mix in some pass. And don't panic. There's no reason to panic. We've overcome the turnover. And now we're coming back this way. Whoa. Wide snap, but they got it down anyway. And Tucker, and that was one of the best hands job of the night by the quarterback. Andy Dalton, he had to reach out there, snare that one, and then pitch it almost all in one move. Again, yeah, the new center. Uh, Watch this one. Whoa. <laughs> well, he knew he was going that way. Yeah. I guess he's I'll give you a head start. <laughs> I'll lead you a little yeah. bit. That's better than going the other way. Yeah, you got that right. We saw that today with Florida. They had major problems snapping the football. Did they ever? Tucker again bulldozing his way for what might be another first down and right now that offensive front of TCU is kind of wearing out Oregon State's defensive line. It's going to be close to a first down while we're checking it. Let's check in with Reese. All right Brad checking in now with some stat sheet stuffers albeit against lesser competition. These numbers are from the first half of the respective games. Kendall Hunter going for 208 for the Pokes. Case Keenum five touchdown passes. 
on its way with a good year to becoming the all-time leading passer in NCAA history. And Stanford's Andrew Luck with over three bills in the first half against Sacramento State. All of it coming up for you on College Football Final at your Sports Center tonight. Impressive statistics by those three. There were some big games all over the country. Aaron Murray making his first start for Georgia had a big game. Tui Mane was shaken up on the play and came to the sideline while they're measuring and they're about uh, what a link shy or just that clip that's on the end of the links whatever that's called we'll just call it the clip so it's going to be third down in the clip last time on third down in this short TCU passed in this spot on the field and had it intercepted I don't think they're going to do that again not with about two inches to go Matthew Tucker alone setback Dalton will do it himself and he's got the first down check in with Holly Rowe Holly well guys I feel like this is a little bit of false advertising because they kept saying that it's air conditioned in here in this building but TCU was smart they made a request to open the roof of the building that way there's no air condition being used and it is hot as can be down here on the field <laughs> you just saw one of the Oregon State players cramping up on that last play guys are starting to get tired and Gary Patterson was smart he knew this wouldn't be a home field advantage because of the heat and he found a way to make it so they practiced eight straight days and over 100 degrees for fall training camp so pretty smart move by Gary Patterson yeah, it was hot as blazes down here until the last couple of days has been very nice Mark Johnson with a very nice reception and out of bounds inside the 15. Well, Holly's right about the the advantage for TCU. I was up in Corvallis on Wednesday, and when I landed in Portland, I realized that all I had was shorts and flip flops and t-shirts, and I needed to buy a, a pullover to wear to practice on Wednesday afternoon because it was not hot up there this week. It was pretty nice, but not hot. Here's a quick snap. Tucker down about the 11. And again, running the football like this takes steam and heart and legs away from a defense. Especially when you're working in what is a hotter condition, as you and Holly were talking about it here. They had the roof closed until the pregame, and it takes about 12 minutes to open it up. They're trying to keep their defensive linemen as fresh as possible, knowing that they've got a fourth quarter to play. That's why Pi is not in every play. They're rotating to try to keep them fresh, but they have not been able to stop TCU. Here's the option again. And Wesley off the pitch from Dalton got it down near the seven. White Roberson, who has an interception in the ball game, you know, on the tackle. Paya coming back in. He was out for a breather. Right now, TCU can get a first down. Inside the one yard line, so it's not second down and goal. As you can see, the stripe, if they get it that close, they'll probably get it in. Quiz Rogers just trying to chill on the sideline as we saw him earlier. He tied the game up, and now Tucker trying to change that tie again. Third down coming up, and this is the biggest third down of the ball game for TCU. This is where, when you've got a quarterback like Dalton, yep. If you roll him out, he's got a little bit of an option, maybe. They've got about uh, three to go. Long two, actually. When they've got him on the edge, it hasn't been with a run-pass option. It's been a keeper-pitch option. And uh, that's been effective. They're on the right hash. I'll be surprised if they don't run wide to the left with the little option and give Dalton the choice on the edge. Here's the pistol set. Third down and long two. He rides it and keeps it and scores it. Touchdown. Andy Dalton for the score from three yards out. Well, watch the defensive end, Taylor Henry, 91, just crashed right down on the back, and it left a little hole, a nice seam there for Andy Dalton to squeeze in. Ross Evans for the point after, and it's good. And another lead change back in the favor of the Horned Frogs. And for the sixth time tonight, Andy Dalton 
on a third down situation picks up a first down rushing more importantly in this case not only a first down rushing but a touchdown rushing and that gives his team the lead 28 21. Well, watch again. Taylor Henry is the end over here. He's going to chase this play, thinking the back's getting the ball all the way. And watch the nice job by the quarterback. Put it in the belly, keep it, keep it, keep it, and then pull it out the last minute and enough of a crease to get it into the end zone. So the lead goes back to the Horn Frogs. Ranked sixth in the country. Trying to take this opportunity in this football season to do what they did a year yeah. ago which is run the table in the regular season and a lot of people think if they get by this game they've yeah. got Utah down the road and there's an SMU game that might be tough BYU. but they're capable they are very capable and I, what I like and what I'm seeing out of them tonight is their resolve right. you know their toughness and it starts with their quarterback he's thrown two interceptions but he's battled back he's kept his poise and offensively when they've needed to respond and answer they have Sharples to kick high and short. Rodgers camps under it at the 10. James Rodgers across the 25 and out to the 28 yard line. Talked about TCU and their schedule at SMU. That's on ESPN, and that won't be that easy either. But that Utah game down in November looms large. Utah with a big win in their opener over Pitt the other night. I agree you know Gary Patterson told us you know with this game against this opponent it's not about style points it's about winning by one more point yeah. and I agree this is a quality opponent in Oregon State right now they're up by seven points can they keep it that way draw play Jaquiz Rogers with a stiff arm a stutter move and then he got planted by two guys and the 35 yard line T.J. Johnson and Colin Jones but not before he got six or seven yards yep. I mean he did get planted but this is another good run for Jaquiz a little delay draw he breaks the tackle attempt by Colin Jones Jones gets him at the end but not before quiz gets three or four more yards 55 yards now for quiz including a touchdown second down at four. James Rogers coming the other way and Big Brother's got a first down. And there you see the idea when you say a guy plays bigger than he is, that's a perfect example. He's only 5'7. He may only weigh 190 pounds, but he is really thick in his lower body. So when you hit him at the waist level and don't wrap up, he's not going down. Watch TJ Johnson gets a doesn't wrap him up. He just sheds that tackle and gets the first down the 44 yard line as the third quarter comes to a close end of three good football game in the Cowboy Classic right now the home team's got the advantage but by only a touchdown TCU 28 Oregon State 21 hang around fourth quarter is on deck